So we have some more seats available. So if you feel like you would like to be seated, please come. Seats are available. We are about to begin. But before I do so, let me make a call. People that he's traveling with developed a problem, and so he's on his way. And the people that he developed. So as we continue to move on, I guess he will be joining us. So may I invite you to stand with me at this time?
Lord. Oh, they tell me of the land of cloudless day. Praise God. Our opening prayer will be praised at this time by Brother B. Humphrey. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Let us pray. Almighty God, it was holy, righteous, heaven with God. We thank the Lord for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your cares. God, is that the work that you have done, Lord, to come into your house today. You know the reason why, God, we are here today. Father, we put your hand for us. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, you are my rock and my shield and my God. I pray, God, this day, Lord, as we are praying, God, this open prayer, oh God, for the reading, Lord, today, we have called God upon you, Lord, for those who are alive. So, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ and his chain also. That we are here, God, to celebrate your goodness. Because, God, you are so God to thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you, Lord, for your lending bread that you gave unto us. Oh, hallelujah. We pray, God, in your heart and name. Lord, to lift your heart. Evil, Lord, you have got to pass away. She can give you more glory. She can give you more praise. But we are here, God, to praise you for what he has done in our life today. So we ask the Lord to bless us. We ask the Lord to take control, Lord, today. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may lay God your hands upon us. My God, when you stand up to dare to moderate the service, God, I pray. Oh, God, be your Holy Spirit today. That gave my heart that I hear today. When this spirit came, come to close. Everyone said it was good for us to be here today. I pray, Lord, today for the real today. Oh, I pray, God, for the family. Jesus. Oh, God, some trouble from far to come here. Oh, God, because of their love, one God. But I'm asking, Lord, today, God, oh, we trust in God in you, Lord, today. Because the writer said, I am with Christ in night and day. As I walk the pilgrim way, so I'm asking, Lord, this day, Lord, let me just rejoice in the Lord. I give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. After all we take. Dear Jonathan, in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Thank you very much, brother. The word of God says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So, God has been faithful to us. He has been good to us. It's a new year, a new month. And today is the sixth day of the first month of the year. And we are alive. And so it is our duty to give thanks to him. He said that in everything we must give thanks. Our first reading comes to us from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Reading from verse 1 to verse 4. And this will be read by Lynn Taylor. I'm asking you please to use this small lecture. In church? planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break up and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Here in the afternoon of God.
Let me pause here for a moment, please. And I would like to take this opportunity to greet everyone. Our Reverend Green. Everyone who have traveled from near and far, I greet you this morning in the wonderful Maybe some of you are coming this side for the very first time. I want to express welcome to everyone that is present here this morning. I pray that your heart will be strengthened, that you will receive a blessing, and that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to overshadow us. And that we should come to the end of this Thanksgiving service, even one soul will give his or her heart to the Lord. Because man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And the word of God said, we are full of trouble. So, while the bread and while the blood is flowing warm in our veins, I would encourage each person to give Jesus Christ a chance. May God bless you. May God sanctify you to the bereaved family. I pray your strength in the Lord. I pray that the God of all comfort will continue to comfort you because we know that it's always very hard to lose a loved one to the grave. But I know that God is able to give you the strength. Please remember those precious memories. And I'm sure that in the time, in the dull time, they will bring you cheer to go on each day. So God bless you and God sanctifies you and God preserves you. Cheer up. You're not left alone. The Lord is with you. The psalmist David said, God is our refuge and strength, a present help in the times of trouble. And so he's right there with you. His right hand is there to guide you through. And somebody says, one writer, what a fellowship, what a joy to find. I said, peace, leaning on the everlasting arms. His arms are wide, they are extended to you today. And so you can lean on the arms of our sweet deliverer. God bless you. God continue to strengthen you and to keep you in these times. He will give you the grace to ride out your star. God bless you, everyone. Once again, welcome. Welcome, welcome. The Church of God of Prophecy, Sandy River, do welcome you all to this Thanksgiving service. For those of you who may need to use the rest room, it is to my left and to your right. Right? So you don't have to go on the outside. The door behind us there, that's the entrance. So God bless you, Richard. And once again, let me we'll get back to our program. And we're going to be taking the second lesson. Oh, okay. They are here. So we'll be taking the selection at this time by Coral Wigner.
and Marsha Pinnock. Please put your hands together as we So long I search for life's meaning and saved by the world and my grief. Then the door of my prison was opened by now.
that Jesus is blood and his righteousness. Can we exalt the name of the Lord again? Here the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth because God is indeed a good God. Has he been good to you? Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. The mere fact that we are here this morning. God is good. He clothes us in our right mind. We are able to move around. And to do things for ourselves. Nobody has to help us. It tells us that God has been good to us. And we are living in the favor of the Most High God. So the mere thing we can do is to give Him the glory. It's to give Him the praise. It's to say, thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. For God has been faithful to us. Amen. There are some persons who are alive. But if you don't see them, they're not able to eat. If you don't turn them, they stay on one side. Thank you, Lord. And we know what happened after that. But God has favored us. So let us show him that we appreciate it. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God sanctifies and preserves you. For we all agree that he deserves our praises. Amen? Amen. At this time, we're going to be moving on to the tributes. And we're going to be taking children and friends. And I see here my mother. So maybe somebody has something to read. So please come in that order. Thank you. Children and friends. All right. May them welcome, please.
you will always hold a special place in my heart that no one else can replace. Love always, dear mom, Gloria. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the children and friends of Miss Stephanie and the reading that was done from her mom and from the rest of the family, my aunt. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And it's okay to cry. The rest of tears are a language that God understands. And Jesus, when he was here on earth, and when his friend Lazarus asked, the word of God said, Jesus wept. So he understands what you're feeling, what you're going through at this time. And it's a good thing to cry. It's better to cry than try to be strong. So can we just give God a praise? Can we just bless the Lord another time? And in the midst of all this, from one of the persons who gave her tribute, what happened to her, happened to her son, was enough for her to stay and not to make a trip. But making a trip of the such thing that took place, it means that was deep love and affection for Miss Mary. Amen? Amen. And she had requested her. So as a church, we're going to be praying for her son. Can we bless the Lord? Lord. Lord us and we pray. And God delivers. So glad that he still answers prayer. We're going to be taking an offering at this time. So we're going to be doing the hymn when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion's bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Praise the Lord. <coughs>
and faithful. Trust in, serve in every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. Maybe some of you have been sitting for a while. Maybe we just like to change your position for a minute or two as we do the chorus two more times. Living in that anticipation that one day, sooner than later, we'll be meeting our Savior. To live and reign with Him forever and ever. He tells us, let not your heart be troubled. For he believe in God, believe also in me. Oh, the 
afternoon again. Good afternoon. This was one of Marie's favorite songs. She used to like love when I sing this song to her. You've been in the storm. See.
Faces that I haven't seen in 30 odd years or 40 odd years. That's the reach of our affection. Yes. Um, Marie and I, we went to um, Stacyville all year around there. Um, and Marie was always known as that um, student with that personality. She had an infectious smile. And today, um, for people to have traveled from abroad just to come and to um, pay respect to Marie. She, she's lying in a um, casket. She can't hear us. But we who, as the um, psalmist said, we who are alive and yet remain, one day shall be caught up to meet not just Marie, but to all of us who are ready for that great day. Marie has left an indelible mark with her smile. I'm sure all of us can attest to her who have met her. The last time I saw Marie was in October when I came down to do a bit of tombing of my family, the graveyard, and she came and we picked her up on the Mandela. And I didn't realize the extent of her illness. But even through her pain, she was always smiling. And I just want to encourage us today, while I'm here, just, you know, paying a tribute. That it's not how we get here, or how we get out of this life. It's what we do between getting here and getting out. And it's incumbent upon every one of us to prepare to get out because one day all of us will be lying in state and someone paying respect to us. I just want to encourage her children, be strong while we pray up. I pray God will give you the strength. But just don't make this just be an occasion of just visiting. But somebody today will understand that there's a tomorrow coming. And are we are prepared for that tomorrow? Because when we close our eyes in death, there come the judgment. Are we prepared? Are we ready? Because when the breath stops, that's it. That's it. There's no repentance in the grave. So I'm just saying to everyone here today who have made it into 2024, Marie uh, has been deceased in 2023, but she's been interred. 2024, we are all gonna go one day. Amen. So I'm just encouraging us, encouraging the children to seek God while we are, are, while you are alive, because one day we shall all be lying like Marie. God bless you. service. I know we have emotions and we've been crying and we're feeling sad because it's never a happy time to lose a loved one. Mm -hmm. I'm from a church I got a prophecy as well from 203 Olympic way. So I realized that it's a prophecy church. I said, yes, well, good. <laughs> but anyway, um, Marie, I've known Marie for many years now and Marie is always a vibrant fun-loving person, always smiling, always kind, always giving something, always having something to give, no matter what. I, 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 I enjoyed my company when she came by the house and because we had a shop in the yard and sometimes she'd be here to, you know, serve in the shop and all that and I get to know Marie. And Marie, 
is an awesome person, really she is. And from the time I knew her, I, I, I sensed that Mary was seeking God. There are many services that I have attended where, not at Olympic Day Church, but at other churches where I meet up with Mary. And Mary really tried to seek the Lord. I can't say that there was a hunger and a thirst for God in Mary. And, and when Mary got sick, and I mean, I called her several times, and Mary, even though she was sick, and I know she was sick, and she was in pain, and you know, going through her chemo and all of that, and you know, when I'm encouraging her, she's encouraging me too. Yes. Uh, Strangely enough. She's encouraging me, even though I am the one encouraging her, I pray all the time and encouraging her to give me too. And so I, I just pray, and I hope with all my heart that Mary really surrendered her life to the Lord, even in her state of being sick. And, I, and in my heart, I believe that she did that. I believe that she did that. And I just want to encourage all of us that we know not what the next minute or the next second will bring. None of us know what is ahead for us. None of us. When we go to our beds in the night, it is not our eye wake in the morning, it's not our alarm clock wake us up. No. It's not the noise of our neighbors wake us up. No. It is the grace and mercy of God in our life that we wake us up in the morning. And we don't take life for granted. No. We cannot take life for granted because guess what? We don't know what the future holds. Only God alone knows that. Yes. That's why I'm encouraging everybody that while you're living and while the breath of life is in you and you're conscious, your, your mind is conscious, just believe that there is a God. Yes. That there is a God. Yes. That there is a God that brought breath into your life. He said he brought breath into man's life and man became a living soul. We are here on this earth to just live anyway and anyhow because we can live any hour anyway. But God watches and God sees our lives. So let us all just come to that reality and that acknowledgement that God is. And God is to be praised and God is to be worshipped. So my sister, sleep in peace. Sleep in peace. As one day, one day, one day, one day, we'll all, when the trumpet sound and, 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 and the dead in Christ shall rise. Yes. Yes. One day, one day. So sleep in peace, Marie. God bless you. Bless the Lord.
He is here. Holy, holy. Somebody just say Jesus one more time. Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus. You want to show that precious name of Jesus? Jesus. Show that holy name. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. At the midnight cry, rather said, we'll be going home. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Rather said, prepare to meet your God. There's no pardon that is offered unto the dead. Neither is there any repentance in the grave. I'm repeating myself. While the blood is running warm in your veins, you better seek salvation deep down in your soul. Because somebody spoke about the dash. The dash is very small, but we'll have to give God an account for that dash. So while you're enjoying your dash, I say prepare to meet your God. I want to thank those persons who would have given their tribute. We were told that when we have gone the last mile of the way, Rest. We'll rest at the close of the day. Amen. We were also encouraged that we should hold on to Jesus and to ride out our star. God bless you. You are hurting now, but your morning is coming. So hold on. Don't give up. Hold on. It is going to be all right. That's right. Praise God. It's just for you to make it right with the Lord. Can we lift another praise in the house? I love to praise God enough. Because dead can praise God. Mary is not able to praise God now. Our sister from another church of God of prophecy said, Mary had that earnest desire. She was seeking after the Lord. Because she had something in her to worship, to give back to her Lord. She has given it. She can't give any more. But we are here. Let us give back to the Lord. Amen. And he said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And everybody can praise God. Because God has been good to all of us. It's the name of Jesus. So can somebody just lift the right hand and just give God a praise?
thousand? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was asking. All right, come along with me. We do this.
okay, just put your hands together. God bless you as we continue to pray your strength in the Lord. At this time, we'll be having a selection from the women's missionary group. And they'll be followed by the sermon. And the sermon will be done by Reverend Joseph Green. Ask that we remain prayerful as he gives to us the word of God. God bless you.
this afternoon and want to greet host pastor and the moderator thank you reverend sonia thomas my very good friend amen, amen. praise god i'm no stranger here i grew up in sandy river and rick ford and then i am residing in cross hill so i am a man of the south yes. amen I really want to also greet all our precious citizens, brothers and sisters, friends, well-wishers of um, the family, and also Stephanie Smith, as known as Marie. And I didn't know as a family member that her name was Stephanie until today, because all of us know her as Marie, I am smiling because I, I think I get that gift to smile, but it has been a very rough experience for me. Let me just bring um, condolences to the family. On behalf of my family, to your family, uh, my wife is not here because we have a past member that we have served for seven years. He has passed and both funerals clashed. And I told him I have to be here at my family member's funeral. Yes. And so my wife is attending that funeral currently as we speak. Um, so, I, I had to be here, and um, I, I let me just um, mention um, Cousin Noel and Kaka. The other day I was calling his name, and somebody said, who named Kaka? I only know Bastin. And I said, Kaka, I remember the name, Kaka. The first time I met the family, I was very small at the time when I realized maybe I was about, um, maybe about six years old there about when mommy died. All right, so a long time, but because my head big, I can remember some things. All right, and then we have Uncle Bossy that I'm very used to, because he's always around. And um, unfortunately, I know he's not here today, but we continue to pray for him. Where is he? Oh my God, can you imagine? Small, you couldn't tell me that that is here. Uncle Bossy. It's good to see you. My God, such great courage. I thought you missed it, but I'm so, so delighted that you are here. Praise the Lord. And then, of course, Simone is here. And we pray for Prashan Simone and believe that God will bring deliverance. Amen. Amen. We believe that God will bring deliverance. I, let me just also um, express condolences to 
to, to Bobby Pauline and also to um, Melissa. And uh, it's, it's so hard losing loved ones to the grave. Um, 2021, 2023 has been a very rough year for the family. Um, my father-in-law passed. And then after my father-in-law, then we have a cousin by the name of sister that passed. Then we have Joe. Where's Don? We have Joe. And of course, then my mom in, in February. And then now Marie for the year ends. So it has never been easy. But one writer says that death is not the opposite of life, but a part of life. And uh, it is said so very often that in the midst of life, there is death. And I used to believe that it's biblical. Because we quote it so often. And it is so real, Red, that we tend to believe that it's biblical. But it is so true. Um, in the midst of life, there is death. And so we really have got to be prepared for it. It will take us at any time. There's no special age, right? There's no special age. Uh, you know, death takes the young and it also takes the old. And so it behooves all of us to ensure that we make ourselves ready. Amen. So that when death comes, we can meet them with the confidence that we have a hope that is bigger than death. In Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Come on, somebody. If you have that hope, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus conquered death. And he said, because he lived, those who live and believe on him will never die. But, uh, but live again. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to encourage your family members. You know, take take heart, take courage. Yes. I believe that if Mary would have given her life solely to the Lord, she is in a safe place. Yes. And I will not stand here to judge wherever she is. Oh. Amen. The Lord has the last say of every man's life. There are some of us who go to church all the days of our lives and will never make it into heaven. It's about the heart that is committed to the Lord yes. and live holy lives unto him. Amen. So we will not judge anyone today. But I, I want to share with us from the word of God that comes to us from John chapter 11 and verse 35. And it is known to be the shortest verse in the Bible. Amen. Uh, John 11, say John 11, 35, you know, just say Jesus wept, Jesus cried, yes. the Jamaican term Jesus Allah, yes. Jesus bawled, oh, come on somebody, Amen. of all the places that we could turn to in times of grief, it is especially precious to read about Jesus. One of the followers of Jesus, um, a man named John, wrote about the life of Jesus. Yes. It is in the gospel according to John that we read, brothers, sisters, friends, the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world, hallelujah, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Do we have a praise? praise Hallelujah in the house this afternoon. Amen. God loved the world with a perfect love. His love has affected us. Amen. He made a decision to love us. And this love has affected us so much that we who did not know how to love even ourselves, we are able to show love because of the love of God. And if I have a witness in the house this afternoon, lift your hands without doubt and give God a shout of praise. We thank God for Jesus. We know why he came. He came to save us from our sins. 
Praise the name of the Lord. So one of the many stories that John records in his gospel tells us about a man named Lazarus Amen. who was a dear friend of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. In chapter 11, we read how Jesus and his disciples heard that Lazarus who lived in a town called Bethany yes. was very sick. Yes. Now, Jesus loved Lazarus and his sisters, Martha and Mary, very much. Yes. After two days, Jesus, amen, told his disciples, Lazarus has died. Yes. And your, for your sake, I am glad that I was not there yes. so that you may believe. Amen. But let us go to him. Praise God. Thank God. Bless the Lord. By the time that Jesus arrived in Bethany, Lazarus had been dead in the tomb, the Bible said, for four days. Yes. Lazarus is the Martha ran to meet Jesus. Yes. Uh, uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall not die. And then he asked, do you believe this? Uh, Martha's response was, uh, she said here, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is who is coming into the world? Jesus, Jesus said, "The re how you will be saved is if you believe that I am the Christ and you accept me as the Son of God." That's the same thing that Philip says to the eunuch. Amen. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and in your heart you confess with in your heart you believe, and with your mouth. Confession is made to salvation. And he said he believed. And Philip says, here is water. What prevent me from being baptized? Hallelujah. It is very important that we believe that Jesus is our Savior. And he alone can save us. He alone can deliver us. He alone can set us free. He alone can bring about the change that we need to have in our lives. Lazarus, other sister Mary came to meet Jesus. Yes. Now, when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, he, she fell at his feet. Yes. And this is a different personality. Mm -hmm. Martha came quarreling. Yes. Mary came bowing down. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. Saying to the Master, Lord. If you had been here, they are saying the same thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, amen, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, Come and see. Jesus wept, the Bible says. Jesus cried. He cried not just because, amen, Lazarus died, but because he was touched with the feelings of those who were mourning infirmity. Am I talking to you today? Amen. Family members, as you grieve, understand that God is grieving with you. As you cry, understand that Jesus is crying with you. Jesus did not weep here because, amen, Lazarus was dead because he knew his purpose in going there was to bring him back to life. But he wept because he was touched with the feelings of the infirmities. Can somebody give God a praise? We have not had a priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Yes. He has been there before. Amen. He has had losses. Amen. The Bible said he is 
acquainted with grief. Yes. And is full of sorrow. Amen. And people eat as though it were their faces, yeah. as it were their faces from him. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Yes. yes. And as a lamb to his shearer, yeah. he opened not his mouth. So the Jews said, See how when Jesus wept, the Jews remarked, See how he loved him. That was their response of Jesus yes. Christ. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Yes. So we, we see here, brothers and sisters, friends all, how our tears can be misinterpreted. Yes. Our tears can be misread. My God, some interpreted Jesus is crying. Hallelujah. As the, that the fact that he is moved and he is touched with the feelings of the infirmity of those who were weeping while others judge him for what he did and what he did not do. The same is true, family members, when you cry. People will criticize that you don't really miss your loved one. You are just farming, performing. You are just putting it over. But but you don't worry about who judge you. Cry if you must. Yes. Yes. Come on. Cry if you must. Yes. Jesus deeply moved again. You know, Kip um, arrived at the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Amen. Jesus said, take away the stone. Lord. Then Jesus prayed to his father and cried with a loud voice, my God. Lazarus, come out. Or the King James Version says, come forth. The man who had died, amen, came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, my God. And his face wrapped with cloth, yes, Jesus said to them, unbind him, loose him. Some version says, unbind him and let him go. Come on, somebody, tell somebody, unloose me. Tell somebody, loose me. Tell somebody, unbind me. Come on, don't put any great clothes on me. I am free. By the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost, I am free. Yes. Glory to God. So the story of Lazarus teaches us yes. several important lessons yes. for facing times of grief. Yes. First, we need to take time to grieve. Yes. Second, Jesus understands our grief. Yes. Third, God has a purpose in mind. Mm. And finally, Jesus is Lord of life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. First, the story of Lazarus remind us, reminds us that we need to take time to grieve. Amen. Sometimes we convince ourselves that what we need to do is to be strong. That's it. And people come up and come yes. around us and say, be strong. Yes. Don't, don't cry. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. I remember when my mom died. I got many calls and visits and, you know, different encouragement. But there is one that still resonated with me today. And it was a sister who texted and said, Remember, Pastor, you don't have to be strong. Because God is already strong for you. Glory to God. I mean, I took comfort in those words. I am being reminded. You know, we know some things. But when we are going through our moments, we tend to forget. Am I talking to somebody? But we need to be reminded that we don't need to be strong family members in these times. Because God is already strong for us. Can somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. He's a friendly and a friend in need, a friend who sticks closer than a brother, closer than a brother. My Jesus is to me. He's my dearest friend. Everything I need is my rock, my shield, my hiding place. Closer than a brother, my 
Jesus is to me. Family members, yes. take time out to grieve. Don't let anybody tell you to hurry up the grieving process. Yes. Grieve as long as you want to grieve. My God, wake up and ball. Amen. Reflect. Oh God Almighty, Melissa and Auntie Pauline. Glory to God. Family members, yes. reflect on, on, on. Reflect on, on, on your loved one, amen, and, and mourn her loss. It's a loss that we need, amen, to give some time to, amen, to reflect on and, and to give ourselves to the process that healing can begin to take place again. Give God a praise, somebody. So we see here that Jesus came to Bethany. When he came to Bethany to comfort the family of Lazarus, he did not brace himself and hold back his tears. The Bible said he wept. Yes. Hallelujah. A lot of times we want to cry, you know. Yes, yes. But because some people tell us not to cry, right. we suppress it. Yes. And we behave as though we are so strong. Yet deep down we are dying. Yes. Amen. Let it go. God of mercy. Oh God, cry. I remember when my stepfather died. Amen. Praise God. When I when I got home from mission school and I sat on the veranda and I saw the crowd coming and I knew the reason they were coming. Man, I felt like the entire world was on my shoulder closing in on me. I was so engulfed, encapsulated by the burden of, of the passing of my step, my step, um, my stepfather. And I remember I passed the porter by God. God bless her soul. Yeah. Amen. When she looked at me, she said, Boss it out if you yes, want. Bless the Lord. Bible says, there's a time to weep yes. and a time to laugh. Yes. Stella read that for, was it the first yes. lesson? The time, amen, to laugh and a, and a, and a time to mourn, a, a time to dance. There's a time and season, brothers, sisters, friends, but everything under the face of the sun. I ask the question, can you imagine if we're just having daylight all the time? We're having night all the time. People just laughing all the time. Sometimes people need to get serious. That you we laugh too much can take on a little seriousness. Then you go back to laughing again. Can you imagine if we have just sunshine and no rain? Yeah. Can you imagine if we just have rain, rain, rain and no sunshine? Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. Oh, time and season on the face of the sun. Come on, somebody. So we must give ourselves, amen, amen, fully to all the experiences that is given to us under the face of the sun. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So uh, I will move on and, and the second thing we want to share, amen, is that, you know, the story of Lazarus remind us that Jesus uh, understands our grief. Uh, so in the dark times, uh, we sometimes feel like God is very far away and doesn't understand how we feel. Uh, has anybody has ever been to, down that road? Yeah. I have been down there before. I can tell you without shame. Amen. Without hesitation or reservation. There are days when I'm going through my dark times. When I feel like God is nowhere to be found. But hear what the word of God says. is our present help even in time of trouble. Listen to me. God is always our help. But he knows in his infinite wisdom that there are days that going to come upon us where we're going to feel so far fed from God or feel like God has actually pulled himself from us and is nowhere to be found and so he leaves a word with us through the psalmist God is our refuge God is our strength he is our present help even in time of trouble God, God, God does not just 
us help us in trouble, but he helps us all the time. But since we will believe that when we are in trouble time, God is not there. He made sure, amen, let it stand written in his word that even in time of trouble, is there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Central never busy one writer says, always on the line. You can talk to Jesus almost any time. Amen. Praise God. It's a royal service and it's free for one and all. So when you get in trouble, remember to give this royal line of call. Did somebody pray this morning before you turn up at this Thanksgiving service of our family member, our loved one? I tell you, if you did not pray, it's time to pray. Tell God about it. When I was coming here, I said, God, I am coming. I want you to be the driver for me. I don't take things for granted. I was traveling less than, amen, eight miles, amen, to come here. I don't take things for granted, amen, that I can always drive. Sometimes we go in the vehicle and the brake fails us. So true. So true. And we are up for a big surprise. So we have got to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. God, amen, understands our grief. Yes, hear what Hebrew, uh, he, the Hebrew writer confirms in the dark, uh, amen, times. We sometimes feel like God is far away and doesn't understand how we feel. But here in Hebrews 4 and verse 15, it is confirmed that God is able to sympathize with our weaknesses because he came to earth and lived as a man, church of God, people of God, friends, amen, all. Yes, a man named Jesus, well, oh, he was given the name, uh, it, it was told that his name shall be called Jesus, for he will save the people, amen, from their sin. He endured the worst kinds of sufferings, uh, from grief over his love last friend Lazarus to a painful death at the cross at the cross of Calvary but it began even in Pilate's hall where he was choked among somebody with many stripes amen the spot in his face and they did him all the ugly stuff amen he felt those excruciating pain and it wasn't for himself it was for all of us come on somebody God understands our grief amen the Bible assures us that when we pray to God in our times, uh, hallelujah, amen, he hears us. Listen to what Psalm 6, 1, 16, 1 and 2 says, uh, amen, I love the Lord, amen, uh, and he moves on to give his reason or his cause. He says, uh, amen, because he heard my voice and, and my pleas for mercy. Come on, somebody, is there somebody with a witness in the house that you love the Lord and the reason you love the Lord is because he has heard your Christ yeah. somebody for many years I was the only one for my mother and I've always prayed I said God should my mom pass how would I manage I know I would not cope my God it was a fear that I had yes. I mean even though I have been saved uh, on uh, roughly 28 years now yes approximately 28 years now I had that fear that dread that should my mom pass I would not be able to survive God never answered me pastor but on the day when my mom passed God woke me up and he gave me a word before he allowed me to be aware that my mom was died he says my son my grace is sufficient for you for my grace this made perfect in your infirmity and then it was later on that he caused me to go and found my mom amen curved neatly curved her legs, lying on her side in her, with her left hand under her chin and the other one placed on top of it and her phone right before her face turned down on a folded towel. When I looked at my mom, I was the one who pushed the key in the door and found her. My God, had it not been for God's grace, I could not, I don't know what would have happened to me. Maybe I would have lost my mind. Maybe I will be still in the hospital in a coma. Maybe I will be still acting insane out of prison. But God's grace kept me. And I know, I remember, that God's grace will also keep you. 
we understand he know the day was coming that Mary would have left this world and he has prepared you for it you are stronger than you believe you are going to make it you will survive and you will bury many others too God Almighty. And one day somebody will bury us too. Yes. Because in the midst of life, there is death. Do yes. you understand? Yes. God has a purpose. Yes. Believe you me, I'm going to stop here because I feel like I'm wearing some person's patience. The third story of Lazarus. Thirdly, the story of Lazarus here reminds us that God has a purpose. Yes. Both Mary and Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, you could have healed Lazarus, our brother, from his sickness and prevented him from dying. So why didn't Jesus come earlier and heal Lazarus? As a matter of fact, he was aware that he was sick. The Bible de deliberately tells us that he delayed going there yes. because he had a purpose, my God. It was to show to his disciples and the world that he is the resurrection and the life, not just in the future, but in the now. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Jesus explained the reason to his disciples. Lazarus become sick and die for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It, it may be hard to say that Mary died for the glory of God. Amen. Jesus. Perhaps God took me. Marry because he wants a family member to, to come to terms with the reality that death is real. And that it's time for you to make it right with God. Is your heart right with God? Come and do it now then. Under the cross of Jesus. Oh, lay your burden down. I don't know. I am I am I am no seer here where this is concerned, and I'm not going to judge. Amen. God saw the bigger picture. That's all I'm trying to say here. Lord God Almighty, somebody else holding on here. The eternal destiny of Lazarus' family and the crowd that gathered at the funeral. Oh, amen. We're at stake when we experience a tragedy. Oh my God. Amen. We have to ask why. Amen. Why me? Amen. And I could have stopped and said, Lord, why this family? I mean, so many deaths in sequence. Why this family? But amen. If I ask that question, amen. Another one that will be posed to me, Ram, is that why not you? Come on, somebody. You are the one. You are the one. I am the one that's chosen to face it now because we are for the purpose of God. God has a purpose. God has created every man for a purpose. And when we fulfill our purpose, then out of this world, he will save us again. Amen. 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 Bless you, God. Amen. Glory to God. We cannot, Lord, thy purpose see. But all is well. All is done by thy Romans 8, 28. I'm closing on this one. It's a precious promise. We know that all things work together for good, for good to them that love God, to them who are the cause according to His purpose. So if you know that you know that you love God, there's a purpose in the death of Mary. It's for you and I to figure it out. But perhaps. It's a message that he wants to send to all of us that death at the time to steal us away, to steal us and to carry us away. Oh, yes, Father, we thank you that at the grave side of Lazarus, you went. Still reminded to us. And Lord, we should lend ourselves ample grieving when we have a loss. 
And Lord, we are being reminded yes. that there's a purpose in everything that happened. Yes. And it is our duty to seek you, to search you out, to question you. We were told growing up that we should never question God. But Lord, we need to question what we don't understand. There is a purpose in Mary's death. We thank you, Lord, that you delayed going to see Lazarus until he was dead. You never showed up until it was four days after the burial. God, you call him back to life. It's a message to all of us that you are indeed the one who has the power to bring dead situations to life. There are some conditions, there are some situations before you today as we gather, as we celebrate the life of Mary, as we grieve, Lord. There is purpose in grieving. Lord, there are situations that you want to address and you hope to address, and through this death, you will. I thank you for the work you have begun. I thank you for what you are doing, what you have started, and what you will finish. Yes. For you who have begun the good work in us, the perfect work in us, yes. will perform it to the day that your son Jesus Christ returns. Yes. It will take us unto himself. Yes. Oh God, who come in, the family members who come in, oh friends that were wishes, and as we reflect today, it's a good place to be in the house of mourning where we can have some serious reflection on the condition of our life, whether we are in right relationship or right standing with you. And so today, all of us, Lord, it behooves all of us to ensure that we assess we uh, examine, oh God, our lives and see whether or not we are in right standing with you. For your word says, as long as I live, says God, I have no pleasure in the death of a sinner, but that all should come to repentance. This it grieves you when one dies in his or her sin. And so today, if there's an unsaved, if there's someone who has not sinned, if there's someone today who's not in a good, a right relationship with you, that they will reflect seriously. And today, make that decision in their heart to serve you until they die, to serve you until you return. Yes, Lord. Oh, praise God. Holy Father, we all things to you. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name.
friends, we are here today to celebrate the homegoing of our beloved Stephanie Marie Smith, affectionately known as Marie. To many people, to others, uh, Christmas toy, pluck -a and Bev. <laughs> Um, when I was first asked to do the eulogy, um, there was no question, there was no hesitation. I'm usually a pretty shy person and I tend to stay away from public speaking, but Marie had such a huge impact in my life when I was growing up. How does one capture the full essence that was this woman? She was a mother, a spouse, a daughter, a sister, a grandmother, a cousin, an aunt, a friend, and so much more to many other people. She was a loving and God-fearing person who loved her family and friends very much. Marie Smith was born on July 25, 1966 in Sandia River, Clarendon, to Gloria Ornsby and the late Orrin Smith. She attended Stacyville all the age school and later graduated from Kellett Secondary School in the early 80s. Like many others, she moved to the big city, Kingston, in search of greener pastures. She was joined by her sisters, Shirley, and later was blessed with another sister, troublemaker, Melissa Gilman. <laughs> She was also thrilled to be acquainted with her brothers, Orrin Smith Jr. and Mabel Smith. While living in Kingston, Stephanie met Anna Henry and together were blessed with four beautiful daughters, Shauna, Patrice, Latoya, and Monique. Family meant everything to Marie. She made sure that they knew and felt her big, amazing love I can definitely attest to that because when I was growing up, she treated me like a mother. She was a devoted individual, mother protector, nurturer, especially to her three grandchildren, Joshua, Zaire, and Tasania. Stephanie also left behind her confidant, her rock, and her life partner, Denroy Brown, also known as Tony. Marie was known for her cooking. Everybody who's ever eaten there, we all know that. On a daily basis, she would always have a lot of hot meals for her immediate family and extended family and friends that would often drop by whenever they knew she was done with dinner, especially on Sundays. Marie would entertain nephews Nikolai, Nick, Webster Jr., and a host of regulars who stopped in for food. It is no wonder she enjoyed working for multiple restaurants after leaving work at the arcade. Marie worked day and night to care for her girls. She was no stranger to hard work, both at work and at home. Every time you called, she was either cleaning or cooking. Her house was always full of people. Sometimes she would invite cousins from the country to spend time with her in Kingston. One of them, Claudia, shared that Marie was responsible for her first trip to the big city, I guess. And there were many other gestures like this that she was known for. Marie was also fun-loving, very outgoing, and without a doubt, very outspoken, who never hesitated to speak her mind. She never missed a gathering, especially when it afforded her the chance to catch up with old friends and family. She would always show up for an event in and around the community of Sandy River. She loved to go home and attend functions, whether it was a funeral, a wedding, a party, she was there. Conversely, however, she was an extremely private person, so many people didn't know what she was going through. She was afflicted with breast cancer for some time and confided in only a few people in her immediate circle. Cancer robbed her body away from us, but it will never take her spirit. Marie Smith was a joy to be around and her cherished memories will always live on in our hearts. 
She transitioned when God said, you have suffered enough, my daughter, and I'm taking you to a new home where there will be no more suffering, no more pain, and no more sorrow. She slipped away quietly in her sleep on Monday, 27th of November, 2023. Today, we celebrate the essence of an amazing woman, Stephanie Marie Smith. Our family would like to thank you all for your support and your continued love during her illness and now looking around at the huge crowd for the continued love and support, even in death. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, for giving us a little peek into the life of Stephanie. God bless you. Much appreciated. At this time, Reverend Green had already prayed, but I'm sure the bereaved family is looking forward to this. So I'm going to be inviting him to pray a brief prayer for the bereaved family. We just all stand and join hands as family members remain seated as we as we stand, we stand in solidarity and support. And um, if you can join hands with the person next to you, please do so as we pray for the family member. Eternal God, you are our refuge. We need our, your everlasting arms. You will drive out the enemy from before us and say, destroy them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for death. Today we say like Job, the Lord gives and the Lord takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we do believe, Lord, that while Job was saying all these words, he was deeply wounded. Oh, Lord. Oh, he was bleeding internally. Yes. He lost all his children, all his possession. Yes. Yet he worshiped. Yes. Today, though it's hard to say, we agree and worship you and say the Lord gives and the Lord takes, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loaning Mary to us for 57 years. She has touched our lives in different ways. She has left footprints in the sand, beautiful footprints in the sand, because she knew she was passing through. I recall her being on my mom's grave making but was not able to come back for the funeral because she wasn't doing well. She turned up even when she wasn't well. And it speaks loudly of her selflessness. Yes. And so Lord, we pray that many of us today will, oh God, emulate, Lord, even attributes like these. Uh, Lord God, we pray right now for a family member as they mourn. Oh God, comfort them, strengthen them, keep them, preserve them. God, their minds, Daddy. Hallelujah. Don't let them lose it. Almighty God, it's so difficult for Auntie Pauline. It's so difficult for Melissa. Oh God, daughter and mom. Oh God, mom that is not able to be here. I know it's very painful for her, but wherever she is at this time, will you hold her firmly in yes. the other palm yes. of your hand? May yes. you hug her right now and help her to feel your heart beat and to know 
that you are grieving with her. You are standing right next to her. As a matter of fact, you are holding her in your arms even as we pray. I thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding that you are offering the family right now that as they go through the grieving process, Lord, they will be healed in due time. They will rise again. The sun will shine on them again. Yes. Oh God, there is a silver lining behind the dark cloud weeping endure just for the night but joy comes in the morning so we stand right now and we hold hands together and we are agreeing Lord for your word says if two or three shall agree on earth touching anything concerning you you are in the midst of bless oh God they are preserved right now Lord the enemy will not have dominion over them the enemy will not get the better of them. We thank you now that even Roshane, you will bring about deliverance in the name of Jesus. Whatever transpired, whatever, oh God, is behind, oh God, the occurrence, we put it all in your hands in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning. Oh God, you took the time out to be here even when she doesn't know what is really happening with her son. Oh God, comfort their hearts. Be with them, Daddy. And God, we pray that in all of this, that your name will be glorified. Yes, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord. We thank you. For being with the family. For keeping them. For watching over them. And for offering them the grace that they need at this time to go through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the church have you say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Reverend Green. Just a moment. You have been a wonderful, wonderful congregation. And I just want to say thank you to everyone for your cooperation. And just to express another time our heartfelt sympathy on behalf of my immediate family, the church family, condolences to you. We will continue to pray your strength in the Lord. And as the word of God said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Stephanie is now awaiting her reward. And we are hoping that we will meet her again in the sweet by and by. May God bless you. The God of all comfort continue to comfort you during your time of bereavement. I am Sonia Thomas and I'm being your moderator. God bless you. Please listen to the final instruction. We are going to be doing a one verse on the chorus of the recessional hymn, and then the ministers will be leaving, followed by the casket, then the family members, and then the congregation. God bless you. You have your program. And then we'll be moving on to the family class for the return. Some glad morning. When this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. If you are able to stand, will you please stand with me?
Yeah, what about Pink? What Pink? Yeah, I don't think so. She's such a cunt because I guess he was the only one. Yeah. Come on, go back someone. Alright. We're okay, so. Thank you. 
Four from cross with it. Alright, family members, is it okay that we proceed? Come on, Pastor. Come on. Shoot to my crowd. I want to give you the time. Do that. Take a bit of that. Young lip. Yeah, look through, look through his coat. Yeah. You have ease off now. 85 you have ease off. Yeah, man, that's a breast. He's a poor dad. Next side, next, next side, next side, next side. One more, one more, next side. Just left, and push, left, push, left, push. Left, push, left, push. Alright. Push again. So well, so well. Yeah, just right here. Right here, right here. Right here. Okay. Right here. Not a lot. No, we're not done with you. Begin by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Makes me to lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside the waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now to the loving care of our Heavenly Father, we commend the spirit of this our departed loved one, Stephanie Marie Smith and uh, commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, anticipating the great resurrection when the dead in Christ come forth with new body and endless life with Christ, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, again, we want to commend Stephanie Marie Smith to you. Lord, we thank you for once again loaning her to us, touching our lives in various ways. So as we bring under or remain to the ground, we ask now that your blessing will continue, your preservation, your keeping care, your tender mercy will be towards the family as they continue to grieve. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. and we all say, amen, amen. and amen. Him? Let's turn. <clears throat> we turn to our programs at the back at the graveside, and we do the hymn, Shall We Gather at the River. Shall we gather at the river, beauty, uh, where the bright angel feet have trod, 
with its crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of God. We blend our voices and sing to God to, together to the glory of God. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet of trod with its crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of God. Yes, we will gather at the river. Beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of on the margin of the river. On the margin of the river. Washing up its silver spray. Washing up its silver spray. We will walk and worship ever. We will walk and worship ever. On the happy golden day. Happy golden day. Sing yes. We will gather on the river. Shining river, every burning day. Praise our spirits will be lead. The river, At the smiling of the river, since whom death will never see them, lift their songs of saving grace. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver. With the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river. Yes, we will gather at the river. Margin of the river. On the margin of the river. Washing up its silver spray. Washing up the silver spray. We will walk and worship we ever. Will walk and worship ever. On the happy golden day. Happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather. Yes, we'll gather on the river. Shining river. May we reach the shining river. Lay we every burden down. 
every burden down. Grace, our spirits will deliver. Grace, our spirits will deliver. And provide a robe and crown. Provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather. Yes, we will gather at the Praise God, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river that goes on the throne of God. At the smiling of the river, at the smiling of the river, mirror of the Savior's face. Never silver. Never silver. Lift their songs of saving grace. Oh, praise the Lord. For yes, we will gather up the river. Sing the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints of the river that flows by the shore. Soon we'll reach the silver river. Or soon we'll reach the silver river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver. Soon our happy hearts will quiver. With the melody of peace. With the melody of peace. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, yes, we will gather up the river. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we all prepared to meet there? Oh, yes, one day we will all go there. Amen. Amen. Marie has started her journey there. Yes. And all of us will end up this way one day. But it behooves all of us to ensure, however, to make sure that we get there in the appropriate way. Amen. Amen, somebody. Right. But the, the Bible tells us that a book was open and another book. And those whose names were not found written there were cast into the lake of fire. And so all of us must make sure that we get our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If not, it will just be too late. But someday we will gather up at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Amen. There are some choruses around the other page, across the bridge. Across the bridge, there'll be no sorrow. Across the bridge, there'll be no pain. The sun will shine. Across the river, and we'll never be unhappy again. Across the bridge, there'll be no sorrow. Sing, we shall have a grand time. We shall have a grand time. Up in heaven, up in heaven. We shall have a grand time. Up in heaven, have a grand time. We have a grand time. Just walking with the angels. 
Father, fellowship, communion, Holy Spirit, rest with me, abide us all, now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Good afternoon. Yeah. On behalf of Flash Food Service, I would like to say thanks to all those who have come along uh, to make this occasion uh, to share the movement of the six family. Flash print is always there for you to cover you at any event and especially events like this and so also I say thanks to the Brown's Funeral Home for coming along and giving that service to the family in a time when they really need it. Flash Print is here to serve you and we are going to make sure that you're being right across the world. So call on us, small events, events like these, Flash Print to be at your service. Thank you very much. Yeah, man, I'm going to be. I don't 